Well, let me let me just get ready here. So yeah, so just 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 sing along with me this morning. Once upon a time, there was love in my life, but now there's only love in the dark. Nothing I can say. A eh? very good, good. Ah, some people from the '80s are here today. Yay! All right. Bonnie Tyler, 1983. And do you know, I just found this out last night, there's a cruise ship that is sailing with Bonnie Tyler into the path of the full path of the eclipse, and she's going to sing that song in the, when the eclipse happens tomorrow. So sorry you all missed the ship, probably left Baltimore this morning. But, but I thought, wow, what a, what a way to go see the eclipse. I think we've got people traveling to see the eclipse this week. Um, Anybody still going? Anybody leaving today to go see the full total path of total, uh, you know, darkness or whatever we're calling it? Uh, yeah, you're going? So you're going? Yeah, getting ready to go? Good. So the other thing I found it, uh, you know, on a more serious note, I found a, a, a historical story about an eclipse from 585 B.C. And in 585 B.C., the Medes and the, and the Lydians were fighting. And they were on the battlefield and they were at war on the battlefield when a total eclipse happened in 585 BC. And you know what happened on the battlefield? They all stopped fighting. And they looked up to the sky, and when they saw this happen, they took it as a sign from God, and they put down their shields, and they put down their swords, and they walked off the battlefield because they felt that God wanted to bring peace. Wow. I hope that does that tomorrow. Right? Don't we need a little bit of that today, right? And really, if you look at another great sign of God, it's your, we're looking at the cross of Jesus Christ. We're looking at Christ today who was the one who brought peace to us with God, God's enemies, it says in the Scripture, and that God was calling us to peace and reconciling, reconciliation with each other. And that happens when we're in Christ, and the other thing that's amazing, not only is the cross the sign that where, where, where darkness right, fell, sin and death, but they rolled a stone, thought they had eclipsed the life of Christ, and then on Sunday morning, what happened, right? The light shone again out of that tomb, and life was resurrected, and sin was conquered, and death was conquered, and so that is our hope, and that is where we reside, our faith resides in Christ, that's what Colossians is saying, right? Paul is saying in this letter to the Colossians, he's saying, you need to stay in Christ, live in Christ. There's no other way to do life without living in Christ. The one who brings peace and reconciliation, that we need to stay there in Christ, we need to live in Christ. And Paul is saying, I am willing to suffer and even die so that I can present and make sure that every single one of you is mature in Christ. Mature in Christ. Now this is a Greek word called teleos, which means not perfect. It does get translated perfect, but not in the sense that we have to have, be perfect and every little jot and tittle is perfect and our hair is perfect or whatever. But it's this idea of completeness. Mature, complete maturity in Christ. Anybody completely mature in Christ today? If you are, please come forward. I'd like to hand the sermon over to you, right? I'm not there. We're not there. We're moving on to mature. We want to grow mature. But Paul's saying we want everyone to be mature in Christ. And we want them to be in the path of totality of Christ in their life. That they want the, that Christ to be all of our lives. And so that idea is really about completeness and maturity and moving towards that in our life. So Paul goes on to, to explain in the last part of that scripture what it means to live life in Christ. And the first thing he says to live life in Christ to be, is to be rooted in Christ, right? Our vision statement as a church is to be rooted in the life-giving message of Jesus Christ, which means that our roots, our spiritual roots, not our religious roots, our historical roots, but our spirit, our soul roots, are to be deep in the soil of Christ, the God's grace and love in Jesus Christ, God's reconciliation, God's peace with us, that we have this relationship with Christ. Our roots are to be firmly in that kind of soil. 
But sometimes we take some of our roots and we take them and put them in another soil, right? And we think those soils are going to nourish us instead of staying in Christ and living in Christ and keeping our roots in Christ. We had a neighbor earlier this year, uh, she, had, they, she had a big poplar tree in her backyard. And one of these storms, you notice the storms we've been having? One of these storms came through and it was real high wind in one of these storms, and took the top of that tree. It was a poplar tree, and the whole thing went over. It didn't break in half at the trunk, or it didn't break branches, the whole tree fully. And it was a healthy, mature, green tree, went over, and all the roots, you could see all the roots come up out of the ground as the tree fell, fortunately, away from her house, but towards the neighbor's house, but missed the neighbor's house. Took out the fence, took out some other trees. Huge poplar tree came down, and just this big root system, system was exposed. Now, if you had looked at that tree the day before, you would have said, that's a healthy tree. But when they went and they looked at the tree roots, the roots were diseased, and that's why it fell over. It could not hold in the soil any longer. It's disease, the root, the the root disease was in the root system, in in the foundation of the tree. And so what was happening in Colossians was that Paul was saying, there are some other philosophies that are leaking into the church that you all need to be aware of and not to put your roots into keep your roots firmly planted in Christ don't go starting these other going over to these other philosophies or those belief systems one of those things was they were saying well you're not really mature christian if you're not worshiping angels there was actually angel worship going on in the community and they were saying so go worship some angels then you'll really be a christian right Or, you know, if you would practice and celebrate these particular festivals every year, then you'll really be a mature Christian, right? So they were introducing, some other teachers were introducing other philosophies, other belief systems, other practices that were not keeping them rooted in Christ. And so Paul is coming in and saying, you got to keep your roots in Christ. Don't be rooting yourself in some other philosophy or some other teaching other than the teaching of Christ, So he says that, become mature, root yourself. And then he goes on, he switches analogies up a little bit, and he says then, build yourself up in Christ. Build up your faith in Christ. That you and I are to be building and growing, like the green pyramids are a reminder that we're to grow, we're to be growing in our discipleship. So we're not a people that just stays where we are. (laughs) We're not a people that just stays comfortable as disciples. So we're always called to grow as disciples, to continue to build our faith and to grow up in the faith towards maturity in Christ, to become like Christ. Here at Glenmar, we've been talking this year about discipleship throughout the year. I've been hitting on this, and we have a discipleship pathway here at Glenmar, and I, we've talked about this before, and there are these six areas of discipleship that we're encouraging people to build their faith in. So Christian relationship, how I'm in relationship with other people, and what does it look to be like to be a Christian in my interactions with people other than the way the rest of the world is working, or worship, you know, how am I worshiping and worshiping God? Am I growing as a worshiper? Am I growing spiritually in my understanding and learning of the Christian faith? Am I growing in my service? Am I stretching myself? Am I stepping out of my comfort zone to serve uh, places that God is calling me to? Is there, is, how's my witness doing? Am I growing as a witness? Am I, am I growing in my opportunities to share my faith? And then generosity, am I growing more generous? Am I building ways and practices in my life to be more generous? And I would actually share with you some good news about our capital campaign. You all remember that? It was a long time ago, right? Um, but the stewardship team asked me to talk about that. We have grown more generous as a church financially. We're our, and that's not just financial. I think we, we're generous in our time and our effort and our energy. One of the ways we see a sign of that growth is actually in generosity. So this past campaign, uh, uh, three, sorry, I got to get my glasses out for this one. All right, getting older. All right, 323 family units pledged $1,267,162 to our ministry budget this year, which is more than years past and is allowing us for, to have the first budget increase at our church and ministry budget increase in three years. So that's good news. That's because people are becoming more financially generous in our church. That's great. The other thing that happened was that um, we also saw 281 family units pledge $2,697,587 over the next three years to help pay down our debt on the building, which will allow us to 
give another, pay down another $600,000 in debt. And that's because of your generosity. That's because of all of us coming together and being generous. And so that's a sign of financial generosity. And there are other ways to be generous as well. So I thank God for the ways that we're growing generously, right? But, it, you know, we can all aspire to be generous, right? I mean, who here doesn't want to be generous? Anybody not want to be generous? I mean, be I mean, you kind of like, well, I wish I wouldn't have to give, right? But how many of us, I mean, we all aspire to be more generous in our, in our life, in our money, in our resources, in our time, right? How many people would like to be more generous with their time, right? We'd all like to do that, right? So we have these aspirations. But it's possible, like that tree, to really look good on the outside, <laughs> to have great aspirations of spiritual growth and not be growing. It's possible to aspire to all these things and not actually be taking steps to actually grow to just be kind of stagnant in my growth. Um, and so that's possible. So we actually have to be working towards that. Let me, let me give you an example of this. Um, uh, I was at the, my family, we were all in the same place. And, and, you know, we have college students now. So we were all in the same house for a few, for like a week, all four of us, because everybody's always going different directions. So we went to the, to the beach for a couple nights. We went to Ocean City, New Jersey. Anybody fans of Ocean City, New Jersey? Yeah. Right, some Johnson's popcorn, some Coors Brothers ice cream, some Manco and Manco pizza. Really good stuff. So I get up the next morning and I decide I'm going to go run on the boardwalk in Ocean City. And I'm going to run five miles. So I said, I'm going to go run five miles. I get up, you know, everybody's still sleeping. Get out there, it's about, you know, it's about 7.30 in the morning. And I'm jogging my first mile down the boardwalk, and I come across this line of 40 people waiting to get donuts. <laughs> and, and I don't stop because I'm like, look at those people over there. Eating donuts, I'm exercising. <laughs> I'm building my muscles up, right? I'm getting ready. I'm, a, I'm staying fit. I'm not going to eat no donut, right? So I look at all those cowards over there in line eating their donuts. And so I run mile two, mile three, and, I, and, and I'm, not, I'm not as fast as I used to be. So I'm running down the boardwalk, and the thing, I usually run out with maybe my wife or just run by myself, so nobody else is really around running with me, but now I've got all kinds of other people running besides me. And I notice a lot of them are passing me. <laughs> like they're just running on by me, like young men, young women, Older men, older women, <laughs> they're just going on by. I'm like, what is going on, Matt? You used to be faster than that, right? So I'm jogging along, and people are past me. So here's what happens when it comes to actual growth versus aspiring to grow. So here's some of the things Matt tells himself when he gets past. Because one, one of the mistakes I'm doing is I'm comparing myself to somebody else, right? So I'm running along, and... Uh, I think to myself, you know, I could take them if I wanted to. <laughs> you know, if I really turned it on, I could take them, right? I, I knew I could do it if I really wanted to. How many people have ever said that as a disciple? You know, I, I could serve. I could go serve if I really wanted to. I, I could worship more if I really wanted to, right? You know, it's an aspiration, right? But we're not doing anything about it, right? So I, I didn't take off. I just let that thought just keep me right where I was, nice and comfortable, right? So I was, what this is called is self-deception, right? I deceive myself into having an, so I tell myself the aspiration, but I'm actually not doing anything to grow my muscles stronger, more stamina, right? So I just self-deceive myself. I tell myself something that makes me feel better about not growing towards that aspiration. Here's another thing I thought. So mile three, mile four, things are slowing down even more. And people are passing me. And people who are like, you know, I, you know again, we're doing the comparison. I'm looking at these people. I'm like, they're, i got to be in better shape than that. You know, I, you know, you're sitting there going, why are they? They don't look like they're in shape people. Like, do they do this? You know, they're summer, what I call vacation joggers. You know, and they go out and they jog on vacation. They never jog the rest of the year, you know. And so, so I'm starting to do this comparison game again. But then I thought to myself, here's the other self-deceptive thought I thought is, they're not running as far as I am. They don't have it as bad as me, right? How many times have we said that to other, we compare ourselves to somebody else, and then we go, well, they just, they're, if they were in my shoes, right, 
they would be where I'm at. You know, we're always comparing ourselves to what other people are going through rather than what we're going through and taking the next step for what we need to grow not and rather than looking at, and looking at them rather than looking at where we need to grow. And so we often excuse that or we deceive ourselves by saying, well, they're not, they don't have it as bad as I do. Or, you know, and so my life is somehow going to do that. And so then we, again, we're telling ourselves to just maintain, stay comfortable, don't change anything, don't grow, don't stretch yourself, don't step out of your comfort zone, right? And so those are ways that we actually self-deceive and aspire without actually growing. And so we think about that. The one of the things I love about the discipleship pathway is that it's not about comparing yourself to somebody else. So if you look at our pathway, can we bring our pathway slide up again, Jeremy? So you look at what's in the middle of our pathway? Cross. What do you think that represents? Who do you think that represents? Easy answer, right? Christ, right? The word to say rooted in Christ. But notice that in each of those areas, there's like a little pathway or a little maze. And we realize that everybody's discipleship is different. So like I'm, I could be really mature in one area, but not mature in another area. I might still, so I might be, you know, need to, do something different in the area of worship than I do in the area of service. Or someone else in the church might be really someone I would go and say, how, you know, help me to learn about what it means to serve because they're more mature in service than I am so I could learn from their maturity, right? So we, instead of, it's not about comparison, but how do I grow and what's my next step in each of these areas? So I might be really basic beginner level or I might be more advanced level in each of these areas depending on who I am. And we're all different. The point is, are we taking steps to grow? Are we stretching ourselves in one of those areas or one or more of those areas? Are we taking steps to grow, to stretch, to build up our own discipleship, right? It's a good thought. How, how are you doing with that? Are you just simply aspiring to grow or are you actually taking steps to stretch yourself and get yourself uncomfortable? Because, you know, going back to the running analogy, I could have ran faster for at least 50 yards. And that would have actually challenged myself and brought me out of that comfortable feeling of running and I could have stretched myself. And in that little bit, I would have grown some muscle fiber and I would have grown some tissue and I would have grown a little bit more stamina, a little bit. See? But you've got to stretch yourself. You've got to take yourself out of that comfort zone a little bit to grow. So that's part of it. So what are you doing to stretch yourself to grow? And the good news is, and Paul wraps this whole up, all up, and he, says, and he says, and when we do this, when we're rooted and growing, we're to abound in thanksgiving. Just, just be thankful that God is working in your life. Because here's the other thing. We won't see God working in our life if we're not stretching ourselves, if we're not stepping out of our comfort zones, if we're not doing things to stretch ourselves, we're, not gonna, we're just going to get complacent and apathetic in our own spiritual faith, in our own journeys. And what's going to happen is we won't be thankful to God for what God is doing in our lives because we can't see it, right? And here's the other thing. Sometimes we fail and we mess up, but you know what? That's good too. I don't know about you, but sometimes I learn best through failure. Sometimes I learn best through a mistake, Right? And it's through our mistakes and failures, and this is the good news. God is not done with us, right? God's never done with us. We're always growing. God will get us up back on our feet again. We shake the dust off, and we get going again. doesn't matter. God will not give up on us. God will not abandon us in our discipleship or in our growth. We are rooted in the love and grace of Jesus Christ, who has reconciled us to God. And we need to stay living there, especially when we fail, especially when we stumble, especially when we don't get it right. And then we can say, thank you, God, (laughs) that you're still working in my life. I hope God's still working in your life today. I hope you haven't given up on your own discipleship because I know for a fact God has not given up on your discipleship. Trust God and celebrate that God is at work in you. Amen.